to that end, we should remind the traditional mass media, newspapers and television, to give much more prominence to artists in order to influence society. They still have to be integrated into the modes of representation of our community, whether a city or country. In this connection, there are few gaps in our collective memory. We cannot ask creators and artists to do everything, to produce the most original and powerful works possible, and be promoters at the same time, to meet their own immediate needs while often guaranteeing the future and the timelessness of their creations. We should never forget that the first traces of mankind's humanity, the first step beyond barbarity, are works of art. From the farthest reaches of our history, stony mountainsides, cave walls, or the middle of an African desert, today, art is still a powerful tool for communication, socialization, and the intermingling of cultures. You can find China in, in Montreal, Le Louvre in Quebec City, Art Negre in Vancouver, Eisen Painting in Calgary, Palestinian artists in Toronto, etc. It offers an antidote to stifling nationalism and is in fact the most beautiful way of bridging our solitude. We must leave to the artist the job and the duty of exploring new territory, new avenues, and different media. It makes the artist our sentinel and our courier using technological change to explore radical change. Personally, I can bear witness as a filmmaker. For the last 25 years, documentary filmmaking has enabled me to go where I would never have gone if I had not had films to make that has questions about identities, nationalisms, exile, revolutions, barbarity, the relationship between uh, the artists and politics, freedom, tolerance, and racism. Making films has enabled me to go out and discover other people, to follow the past ways of knowledge, and share things with my audience. In my films, I pursue an, it an uh, itinerary that is as much philosophical as cinematographic. I challenge the obvious uh, media truth that relies on the illusion that everything can be said about an event, a person, a situation, or a plight, because I know that it cannot. Instead, I try to say everything everything that can be known about an event, the person, the situation, or the plight that will lead to a heightened awareness impelling the spectator in society to do their duty as thinking beings. I know that when faced by the tragedy or the beauty of this world, our duty is not to laugh or weep, our duty is to understand. The Quebec writer, Jacques Ferrand, I said that reality hides behind reality. I agree completely. The fact is that truth is not a given. It is often plural. And it is this complexity that an artist's work must reflect at the risk of inviting controversy. Because in the search of, for truth, Confrontation is inevitable. My filmmaking is based on this philosophical precondition. The spectators themselves are challenged by this relationship to the truth. They cannot sit idly by on the other side of the screen like attentive observers of the story as it unfolds, passive witnesses of the unexpected outcomes of a clash of personalities. On the contrary, I do everything possible to compel them to abandon their exclusive role as witnesses or spectators. I make every effort to drive them into the arena of the film by provoking the controversy that is a precondition 
of awareness. The creative approach, approach, the creative approach, lies on a highly complex interpretation of reality. It is an attempt to reveal. Filmmaking is like painting, theater, or any other art that tries to represent, or rather to construct, the reality that lies behind the apparent reality. I know, I know that what I'm saying about filmmaking, which is what I do and what I love, I can say about artistic creation in general. Creation is not a realms for the humanities or for cultural intervention. Still less for social work, I believe that its role is the more basic one of resistance founding, uh, founded on critical thinking. It is this sense that heart is a primary locus for lively thought within a culture, in a society. It is a space for freedom and expression by younger generation, often their only way of feeling included, just as it is the last resort of the outcasts of society. In this sense, the artist does not have a monopoly of critical thinking and resistance, and that is a good thing, but the artist does have a basic right to a fair share of respect and attention. The destiny of a people is not something that can be left to the expert alone. Culture and thought cannot be managed as you manage an organization chart. History is replete with unfortunate examples in which creative activity in a society perish at the very hands of its benefactors, whether well-meaning bureaucrats or short-sighted monarchs. Calgary, Calgary could be the place that prevents Canada from neglecting this radical issue of culture and art by reminding Canadians that it is a central question for the destiny of our society. The country that no longer listens to its creative people is culturally doomed. Artists must be allowed to remain on the periphery of the present, sometimes indicating where, what we think of as our idol world has gone astray or failed to complete its journey. It is therefore important to make room for those whose task it is to explore the tragic vagaries of human existence, its beauty, sometimes and its ugliness, and to find the sublime, the unexpected or the unpredictable obscured by the commonplace. It resembles the work of those who pan for gold, just as futile, but just as essential, with its need to dream, its painstaking labor, and its sublime revelations. Thank you.